Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can generate embeddings for your models in Ruby on Rails. Now, if you're not familiar with embeddings, it is useful for doing uh, similarity searches. And a lot of people use this for implementing RAG systems in their apps. And if you're not familiar with RAG, it basically means that you can store a bunch of data and then only pull up the relevant bits of data and then feed that into, let's say your AI responses. You could probably use this without like directly interacting with the AI chat. You could use it for other use cases like querying through large amounts of data. But embeddings are helpful because it'll transform your content, like your text content into these vectors of numbers that store the similarity between each other. And then you could pull up relevant information to let's say what a user types in, you can pull up all the different relevant information. So I know a lot of people are excited about this and I wanna show you how you can do this in a Ruby on Rails app. And it's actually super easy. So we're gonna be using the neighbor gem, which is a super cool gem, which takes care of a lot of the difficulties in creating the fields to store the embeddings and also to query the nearest neighbors. So we're also gonna be using SQLite so we have the SQLite VEC gem, which is going to allow us to store our embeddings in the SQLite model, which is the built-in database. So that is super helpful. And for creating the embeddings, we're going to be using the Olama Ruby gem and the Olama library. So you're going to want to make sure that you have downloaded Olama already. And we're going to use the Llama 3.2 model. So make sure that you have that installed and running. And to run this Olama 3.2 model, we can just run Olama run Olama 3.2 and that'll start up the model. And if you don't have it, it'll pull down this new model. So let's get straight into the code and we're going to generate a brand new app. So I'm going to say Rails new and we'll do embeddings on Rails. That's what I'll call it. And let's just go ahead and generate this app. Boom, just like that, we have the brand new Rails app and I'm going to CD into this app and I'm going to generate a simple model to store our information. So let's just do a Rails G model item and I'm going to add a simple content field, which is going to be text. So this is where we can store all of our content, which is going to be transformed into embeddings. So let's just do this simple model and then we'll migrate the database and then let's get straight into adding the libraries that we're going to use. So first of all, let's add the neighbor library. So to do this, we're going to add the gem to our gem file. So I'm going to open this up in a code editor and I can go over to the gem file and I'll drop in the gem and then I'm going to run bundle. Just like that, we have the neighbor gem. Now we're going to also want to grab the SQLite vec gem. So I'm going to go and copy this and drop it in and we'll also run bundle. Now I was facing some issues when I was trying to run this because I'm on Mac and it looks like it says uh, it could not find gems matching SQLite valid for all resolution platforms. So it's talking about these platforms right here. It doesn't have a version of that. And I did a bunch of research looking into this. And basically what happens is inside of our gem file lock, we are specifying all these different platforms that we're gonna use. Even though I'm on Mac, I only need this one platform. Uh, except for when we go and deploy to a Linux production server, we are going to need another Linux platform. But what we can do is, uh, these are the ones that are not valid, I'm pretty sure. So we can just, well I think some of them are though. Uh, but what we can do is, for now, let's just remove all of the other platforms, except for the one that we're using, which is the ARM64 Darwin. So let's go ahead and remove these. And then we can do a bundle again. And you'll see that it actually works and we get the gem. So there we go. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do this Rails Generate Neighbor SQLite. So I'm going to run this. And boom, we now have that set up. And finally, we are going to add the field on our model. So we're going to add a column to store the embeddings. So let's go ahead and do a migration by doing Rails G migration. 
I'll just call this add embeddings to items. And we now have the migration file. I'm going to go over to that by going to db migrate and going to the add embeddings migration. Right now there's nothing in it. So we're going to drop this line from the documentation, which is going to add a column to our model, which is going to be called embedding. And let's go ahead and run Rails db migrate to make sure this works. And boom, we now have an embedding model or an embedding field on our model. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add this has neighbors embedding to the item model. So let's go over to the app models item and I'm going to drop in the has neighbors uh, field with the embedding column. And boom, that's basically it. So now all we have to do is uh, set the embeddings and then we can query them to find the nearest neighbors. Another thing is we can actually do this on the fly. So let's say that you're going to pass in a user's prompt and you want to pull up relevant information. You could just convert the prompt into an embedding and then query your database of items. So that's kind of how you would do it for a rag search. And I've done this in previous videos, like the one where I built a trainable AI model with Olama. But let's just get straight into generating the embeddings. So to generate embeddings, you do need to use an AI model for this. So you can use probably any AI model. If you if you want to use like DeepSeek or OpenAI, you could probably use that too. But for me, I'm going to use Olama. So let's go ahead and grab the Olama Ruby gem. And we can go ahead and get this set up. So first of all, we'll grab the gem and we'll add it to our gem file. Let's go to gem file, drop this in, and then I'm going to run bundle to get this installed. Just like that. So we now have the Olama Ruby gem. And then we can just simply generate the embeddings. So we're going to need to create a client. And then somewhere around here, there is an embeddings line right here. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and um, kind of wish I did a scaffold so we could have some UI, but I don't think I'm going to do UI in this episode. This is just purely back end, and you guys could work on doing the UI, but I will make a future video where I create a whole uh, trainable model app and I'll give out the source code and everything. But for now, let's just take a look at how we can generate the embeddings on the back end. So I'm going to create a job for this. Let's do Rails cheat job. And I'll call this create embeddings. Just like that. And now inside of the jobs, let's go to app jobs and create embeddings job. And then inside of this job, I'm going to pass in the item ID. And then we can look up the item, say item dot find item ID. And then all we have to do is generate the embeddings off of the content field. So I'm also quickly going to go to the item model and I'm going to add a validation. So we'll say validates presence of content just to make sure that or actually it's validates presence of space colon content. <laughs> so we can verify that uh, you have stored a content field on the item and it's not just nil. So let's go back to the gem and we're going to generate the embeddings now. So to do that, we're going to have to set the client first. I'm going to drop in this line to set client from the local Olama server. And then let's go to the embeddings section. And I'm going to drop in this line of code. So by default, it's on the Llama 2 model. I'm going to change that to Llama 3.2, which is a lot faster. And then for the prompt, we're just going to pass in the item.content. And boom, just like that, it will convert this text, whatever you pass in, into embeddings that you can store on the model. So then we're going to get the embeddings back and we're going to store it uh, by updating the embedding field on our model. So let's say item.update embedding and we're going to pass in result and we have to access the embeddings that we got back. So it's going to be result zero and another bracket embeddings. I think it's plural, but they show you right here. Actually, it's singular. So it's just singular embedding and boom, just like this, this should work to create embeddings for your models. So let's go ahead and see if it works by going to the console. I'm going to do Rails C and let's go ahead and create some items. So I'm going to say item equals item.create content. And we'll just do like Indigo Tech tutorials. So boom, we have a new item. And now to create the embeddings, we have to run our job. So let's say perform now and we'll pass in the item.id. Boom, it's going to go through hopefully really quick and boom, just like that. Now, if we check the item model and we do a reload, we'll see that we have this whole array of vectors 
or I guess, yeah, I think that's what it's called, an array of vectors. And this is the embeddings for that piece of text. So Indigo Tech Tutorials, it's, it turned that into a bunch of numbers, which you can use to query similar pieces of text. So if we create another item, let's go ahead and do that. And we say, learn how to code. I'm pretty sure that this would be uh, close to Indigo Tech Tutorials somehow. And I think it's because the tech word and the code word, those are pretty similar. But let's go ahead and see if this works by going and doing a query. So we can say the item.nearest neighbor. So again, I'm gonna reload the console just to make sure that everything's fresh. And let's grab the nearest neighbor. So actually we don't have a nearest neighbor for whatever reason. I'm gonna to try to grab item.first.nearest neighbor. It also doesn't have a nearest neighbor. Interesting. Oh yeah, we never created the embedding. This is getting annoying. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to go to the item model real quick. I'm gonna do an after create commit. Create embedding. Just so, so I don't have to remember how to, to do this. I'll put this in the private section. And then we'll just do create embeddings job. Perform later. And we'll pass in the ID. So that should simplify things. And then I'm just gonna destroy all the items real quick so we can retry this. All right, cool. So now if I do item.create content indigo tech tutorials. Okay, so we now have that created the embedding for it. And then I'm also gonna create one like learn how to code. And let's do one like Ruby on Rails programming. So these are all pretty similar, as you can see, like those, I think those would pull up together if you're gonna check the nearest neighbor on them. Now we can do something totally different, like pickles. Pickles has nothing to do with coding, at least in my mind. And now let's try to find the nearest neighbor. So let's say item.first, and we'll run that query line, which is gonna be right here and boom let's see what the let's see how many nearest neighbors it has it has three of them and then if i pluck the content we have learn how to code ruby on rails programming and pickles so <laughs> i guess they thought that pickles was close to indigo tech tutorials i don't know if it's that's just because that's the only ones that they have let me try to throw in some more random things like potato and that's not even how you spell potato. But I know that this does work on large sets of data. I wish I had like a better way to test this, but let's see. Yeah, it's it almost seems like it's just pulling up all of the data. Because this is Indigo Tech Tutorials, it's not really that close to potatoes and pickles but how about we limit instead of five we just do like the first two and look these ones are way closer so learn how to code ruby on rust programming were the first two that pulls up for indigo tech tutorials which is actually perfect so i think what happens is the more data you have the more it'll find the closer matches but it probably has a fallback it's like okay pickles is since there's only like a couple options that is kind of close i guess and i know you guys can go and test this more but hopefully this is helpful and you learned how to generate embeddings using Olama, SQLite, and Ruby on Rails. So it's super easy now that I figured out how to do it. And I hope you guys have a lot of fun working with this. And oh yeah, like I said, if you want to just do on the fly um, searches, all you're going to do is do the same process of creating the embeddings, but for any piece of text and you don't have to store it on the model. Instead, you just take the embedding and you pass it into this query. And that's what I'm going to be doing in a follow-up video where I'm going to build a full app, which is going to allow you to train custom AI models. So yeah, I hope you guys stay tuned and you're excited about that. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you again soon.